So when the patients are referred to a vascular surgeon for a spine exposure, the decision has been made to approach the spine from the front. This is what you see from the front. You can see the discs very well. The other ways you could possibly fuse someone is posteriorly, which is the way most spine operations are done. But as you can see, it's very difficult to see the disc through here. The spinal cord goes through here, the nerves come out here. In order to see the, the disc itself, you have to remove all the muscle that sits here, remove some of this bone, pull on the nerves, and then piecemeal through a very small window, get to the disc. It is much easier once I provide exposure. There's no piecemealing, there's no pulling on nerves. The surgeon just cuts out the entire disc, cleans it out, and gets a much bigger implant in from the front than he can ever get in from behind. The same can be said for going from the lateral position. You still can't get as much of that disc as you can when it's sitting right there in front of you with all the blood vessels moved to the side. The expertise of a vascular surgeon comes first as being general surgeons, where we do all the operations in the abdomen and the retroperitoneum, which is the space behind all the bowel and intestine. But the biggest important part would be uh, with regard to the, the blood vessels. The major blood vessels, both the vena cava, the iliac arteries and veins, and the aorta, are all attached to the spine and have to be mobilized in order to get exposure to the disc that the spine surgeon is trying to remove and then replace with an implant of some sort. So the advantages of going from the front would be that you get a better fusion because you get more of the disc out, you get a much bigger implant so it all works better, it's an incision that is muscle sparing, we're not cutting any muscle at all, incisions that are covered with glue that are not laid upon and they heal much better, and finally we can make incisions on the front that are cosmetically appealing. Uh, they can be placed in natural skin creases which also heal very well. They can be hitting and it doesn't sacrifice any of the safety or advantages of going from the front. To make a list of the risks for this operation from my standpoint, it would be injury to the big blood vessels, Okay, that's why a vascular surgeon is there. Number two, infection, which is very unusual. A heart and lung problems, which can occur with any major operation or general anesthetic. Blood clots in the legs, also known as DVT, and wound breakdown. The larger the patient, the higher likelihood that their wound is not gonna heal well, and so that's a significant risk for some people. The last thing would be, on occasion, lymph nodes will leak in the back of the abdomen. We have to divide those lymph nodes, we cauterize them, but they can leak and create a fluid collection that has to be drained, but fortunately that only occurs once every couple of years. After surgery, patients can expect that their belly's gonna hurt, but the other things that they will expect is that they're gonna be puffy, that's from all the IV fluid. Their gut's not gonna work well for a few days, and there are many reasons for that. For that reason, we tell people to go very slowly with their diet. We'll let you have ice chips and water that night. The next morning, you can have juice and jello. We'll add crackers to that. Then it's soft stuff, puddings, yogurt, breads. What I tell patients is that for the first two or three days, if you put it in a sink full of water and it falls apart, you can eat that. When it comes to skin closure, uh, many different surgeons will close things differently. They'll use steri strips, they'll use staples. Our routine is to use a subcuticular closure, which means all the stitches are on the inside, they're all absorbable, and then on the surface we'll use something called a skin glue. That glue goes on liquid and it hardens into a flexible plastic, which then becomes waterproof and bacteria-proof, which is important because you can get up and once it cures over about 24 hours, you can get it wet in the shower and it won't have any problem for you. Patients always wonder if this is the best operation for them. I would say it depends on what the spine surgeon says, but this is quite routine for us. I do between 200 and 300 of these cases a year. I work with all 25 to 30 spine surgeons in town. We know it's a big deal for you. It's pain, it's a big incision, but it works well and it fixes your problem. So I think you should have confidence that your team is gonna take good care of you.